Hi there, welcome to this month's practice clinic. I'm Graham Fitch, I'm one of the co-founders of the Online Academy. And what we do each month is we do a live uh, Facebook practice clinic that ends up going on YouTube. So you may be watching this from YouTube and if you are, just look down at the description box below and it will give you all the details uh, about the Online Academy and the sort of things that we're doing. One of the things we do is invite subscribers to send in their questions, usually related to practicing as opposed to technique, although of course the two things completely overlap. But I like to think of uh, uh, practicing as, as, as the technique of learning, if you will. So what we do in our practice time, which is also te everything's technique when it comes to it. So I've got questions today about Couperin, I've got question about a Bergmuller study and then uh, Debussy Reflet dans l'eau and it would be lovely just to just squint at the screen here. I'm, I'm using my iPhone for this purpose and it means that I have to squint at the screen but welcome to you. If you could just let me know where you're watching from that's always it's always nice if I can see where you're from and hit all those nice heart buttons. I can see Sinden um, and who else? The screen is, is scrolling. So let me um, get on with the first question and by all means if you want to make a comment please do. I can't address the comments, uh, I can't promise to address the, co the comments as we go along but um, you, we will get back to you afterwards. Oh, so, so Anna from Brisbane, that's wonderful. And Janet, hi Janet from Norwich. So the first question is from Salim who asks about Francois Couperin's Les Barricades Mysterieuses, this wonderful piece that was written for the harpsichord um, and the harpsichord has no pedal, it has no sustaining device. What Couperin does is create this most incredible effect that sounds like we're pedaling. I can promise you that I'm not touching my pedal but I get this quality of, of harmony from the overholding, the overlapping touch. And if you think of this, it's a rondo, so that theme keeps coming back interspersed by the various couplet. We have three couplet, and then the, the grand couplet, or the, the opening, uh, comes back. So what we need to do, Salim's uh, question is, is in three parts. One, how to use good technique to hold a key down while stretching the hand out to pressing another note simultaneously. Uh, okay, I, I don't like the, the word stretch too much uh, and I don't like the word press <laughs> because press implies pushing and keep pushing. Um, one thing that we do need to do is to hold on to other fingers, hold on to fingers while we're releasing others. So if I just take you through it step by step. Now when I played my D, I didn't let go of my B flat. I'm ready to let go of my B flat but I don't lift it all the way up to the top, I try and keep it within the key. that's seriously important because if I'm trying to find it with a finger then I do have a stretch. If I've got a stretch I'm likely to have tension. Can you see it's a very tiny movement. So what I would do here would be to to play very slowly, check in with my wrist, is my wrist free? You don't have to make this little wobble. I'm just showing you that the wobble is sometimes something I use to demonstrate how free my wrist is. Don't do that, you don't need to do it. And now, free, free, and then I play the A. Now the old school um, had a series of exercises, that, that I'm thinking of Doknani, the exercises at the beginning, which if they're done well, can be very helpful. Um, I don't like the idea of using those for strengthening the fingers, 
but for just holding, um, let's say I'm holding on to one and two and four, and I'm just playing three and five, my attention is exclusively in the fingers that I'm holding, not the fingers that are playing. So I'm asking one, two and four to stay down, but you notice I'm still using mobility here. There's no key bedding, there's no pressure into the holding keys. Let me do another combination. Let me do one, three and five, loose and free, and then let me just play two and four. So I'm not using those exercises for strengthening at all, but I'm using them to sense that ability for a pair of fingers or maybe three fingers or even four fingers to hold and rest in the bottom of the key while other fingers articulate around them, above or below or around. And provided I'm not pushing into my keys, that's a, that's a, a useful uh, exercise to, to practice occasionally. It's certainly what we need to do here in this piece, isn't it? And I need to hold my, I need to play my second finger while releasing the fourth finger. But we have to do that terribly slowly. Until such time as the releases are automated. So I don't feel any stretch at all there, Salim. Um, that's possibly why you're getting tension in your hand. Now you ask about the uh, the trill, the not the simple trills, um, the like we'd find in bar four. No, I do that as a tied trill. time to do a four note job and also it tends to sound a little bumpy. Now the one I think you're meaning uh, to, to refer to is bar 23 where we get the turn sign and the trill sign on top of each other, one on top of each other, which really just means a trill with a turn. So you, if you don't have time you could do a turn. If you've got time to put a, an extra repercussion and then the turn at the end, that would do the job, especially as there is a little space between the, let me see if I can pick it up from somewhere before, there's a little bit of space before we go back to the rondo. We don't want to play metronomically here at all. just put a little breathing place in there, a little comma, um, to articulate the, the, the different sections. Now, the next question is from Adina, um, who asks about Bergmuller Opus 109, number five, a, a, a little piece called, a little study called La Source, or the stream. A mm. um, little stream with the demi semi quavers or 30 second notes. <laughs> question relates to the rotations. I have practiced all the rotation exercises in Penelope Roskell's The Complete Pianist, Chapter 12, as well as the rotation exercises from you, and have yet to find one which addresses how to hold down the first melody note while playing the fifth thumb octave rotation of each of the four sets of beats in each measure of the piece. The tension of holding down each melody note becomes unbearable. How would you approach the rotations in this piece? Well, the first thing to do, first thing I'd like to say there, Adina, is don't hold, don't try and join. Don't try and hold down those melody notes. It's as simple as that. Um, the, the, the pedal will do the job of the, of the legato connections, and there is no indication for legato in the right hand, at least in this edition. Um, so... see what I'm doing. If I play my right hand by itself with no pedal, you will hear that I'm giving prominence to the melody notes, but I'm not trying to hold them. And then when I add my pedal and my left hand,
physical connection between the melody notes. Um, I'm not aiming for that um, because holding this note down while doing the rotation is not impossible, but it's not necessary because the, the pedal will do that job for you. But so now just let's look at the exercises for rotations that I would recommend here. Uh, so we, we start off with, with a, this rotation between the, the four and the five. Now, what I like to do is to make divisions of six for a pair of notes. Now that means one and a two and a. You see where I'm putting the stress? First of all, the accentuation goes onto that finger and then that finger. So I've made a sextuplet subdivision of two notes, of a pair of notes, one and a, two and a. And then I can practice going back and forth between those two fingers uh, until I'm comfortable. Now, you'll notice that my elbow is in one spot. So when we're talking about rotary movements, a lot of time what people get wrong is that they're unstable here. So you get this, what I call KFC elbow. Uh, the elbows uh, uh, wobbling around. This, this needs to be stable. And the wrist needs to be stable. We don't want to be um, moving up and down here. That's a very free movement. Then do it with the octave. Two and one and two and By practicing it with the sextuplet subdivision, we give each finger a chance to be the leader of the pack. First of all, the B, then the D, then the thumb, then the pinky. And then when we come to the piece, can you see those rotations working very freely, um, but with no holding? Now the last question comes from Shelley, and that's related to Debussy's Reflet dans l'eau. I've been working on it for many months now with a teacher and I'm challenged to keep the runs even, fast, with each note struck, not missed. And, and then Shelley goes on to list uh, several measures, too many for me to go into in the context of this occasion. Um, now there's one word that stands out at me, um, which I'm wondering if the, the word struck, I'm struck by the word struck that you use there. Striking a key, um, it, rather than just perhaps caressing or floating or, or, or plucking. I think that what I would feel, it's, it's this sort of pattern. Let me find an example. Um, uh, yeah, so where we have this kind of... I'm aware you probably can't see the top of my keyboard, maybe just about. Now my pedal is down because I need, I need to practice it very often with the pedal down. Why? Well, first of all, the dampers are then raised, but the pedal will be down when we play. The dampers are raised, meaning that I don't, my finger doesn't have to lift the, the damper. The pedal's done that job. So my keyboard is a little bit lighter as a result of this. So what I feel is that my arm is brushing. I don't feel like my weight is down at all. I feel like my elbow is high, uh, higher, and I'm like a, a puppeteer operating a marionette. Um, if, you, if you can imagine that, you've got a puppet down here, you've got, you're holding the strings of the puppet, and the puppet is, is kind of not firmly into the ground, but, but just above the ground with the tippy toes on the, on the ground. I've never, never actually operated a puppet, but I can imagine what that would feel like, and it's a very kind of hovering, suspended feeling. So my arm is suspended, and my fingers are scratching there. What I feel when I do that sort of thing is, is a leggero from, from the tip of the finger. This sort of movement, if you imagine this sort of movement there from the, from the fingers, and then you can also activate the tips. So I would practice it um, staccato, leggero. Let me do it an octave lower so you can see it better. Can you, can you, if I took the pedal away, it's, it's not a legato touch, despite the phrase marks that go across the top of the page. It's a leggero, or even in this instance, a leggerissimo, which is a staccato touch, uh, je parlais, it's sometimes called in French. 
Um, so the, the, a couple of other things. The, when we move from one octave to the other like this, in any kind of arpeggio, we want to make sure that we're very free in the wrist. Um, now, the, there is a way of doing this uh, where you just shift across rather than trying to pivot over the thumb. I quite like the feeling of both. I would practice both. Jump off the end of this group and land in this group. Or even just the first three notes. That will give you the shifts. Now, I feel one other thing happening when I come across. I feel a little rotation between the thumb and the four. If I show you that on the back of my hand, you'll see it clearly, more clearly. One, two, four, three, two, one. Now, when I go across, I feel that the fourth finger rotates from left to right. And if you wanted to get the sense of that, you could practice a trill from four to one. But notice how the movement goes. The rotation goes this way. The thumb always rotates toward the body, so inwards. Okay, so that if you're not used to that movement, it, it will feel a little counterintuitive to start with. Once you get it, the body will love that feeling. Do you see how that works? The fourth finger is going from left to right. The thumb is going from right to left. So I would sense that movement as I go across if, uh, when I shift. So it's not just a shift across, it's a shift with a, with a little rotation at the end that gets me from one spot to the other. So practice very, very lightly there, Shelley. Um, I don't know why the, your passages are not um, working for you because I can't see you, I can't hear you. But those are just a few general points that I think would should help you there. And um, that's the last question. So it's a very short uh, clinic today. I will look forward to seeing you next month when we will have more questions from um, subscribers to the Online Academy. Look forward to seeing you then. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching.